Hi, this will be a short video on frame bounds and center and creating views from code. So here I am in Xcode and I'm going to start with a brand new project and I'll choose single view application as my project and I'll call this frame bounds and center. And then I'll save it into this folder here. And there we go. So um, normally you can create a view in Storyboard, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a view in code. So I'm going to go over to uh, viewcontroller.swift, and what I'll do is inside the view did load method, I'll just delete that comment, and then I'll create a new variable named box, and I'll set box equal to a new instance of UI view. We can, we can create an instance or initialize UI view with one of these three initializers. So uh, init with coder is going to be how the view gets initialized from storyboard. We'll talk more about that later. Um, creating a view this way creates a view with no size. So it'd be a zero, zero sized box at the location zero, zero, right? It has no options. If we create it with a frame though, we can use a CG rect to determine where the view displays on the screen and how big it is, okay? We'll choose this one. So what we need to do is we need to pass a frame in, and a frame is defined as a CG rect. A CG rect is a special class that defines the following properties, x, y, width, and height, okay? So um, and actually, CG rect does more than this, and we'll talk more about some of its other features later. But right now, what we want to do is we want to place a rectangular area on the screen that this box can draw itself inside of. Okay, so X and Y is the upper left corner of our box, and this is going to be the location where it, where it sits, and then width and height will be the width and height of the box, okay? So I'll choose this initializer here, and we'll set X to 0, Y to 0, width to 100, and height to uh, 200, okay? And there we go, right? So now we've created a box. And we won't see this box for two reasons. One, it doesn't have a color, and without a color, it'll be invisible, essentially. And two, it needs to be added to the display list, or the, the view of this. It has to be a child of this view, okay? So first, let's give it a color. So we'll say box background color equals UI color dot red. And then what we'll do is we'll say view, and this view is a UI view that's owned by view controller. So view controller has a default view property that is a UI view, right? And we can add other views as sub views of view. So every view, even the view we can we create here called box could have other sub views inside it, okay? To add a view as a sub view, you'll use the dot add, you'll say view dot add sub view and then you'll put a view here, right? So in our case, we'll put box. Okay, there we go, so we got box. Um, it's a UI view, it's this size, and this location, and then the background color, and we've added it, right? So I'm going to switch this over to uh, iPhone 6S, and then I'll test it. Oh, there we go. So there's our box. So the X and Y of 0 determine the position of the upper left corner of our box, okay? And then the 100 is the width, and 200 is the height, okay? So um, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us the coordinate space of the, um, of the container here considers 0, 0 to be the upper left corner, okay? And then, um, you know, this positions the upper left corner of our box there, right? Okay, so anyway, so there's a there's a quick a quick look at um, at UI view and and CG rect. What else can we do with this, right? What if we did this just as an experiment? What if I set the uh, the Y to or X to twenty and the Y to twenty? What does that do to our view? Hmm. So now it moves it over twenty and down twenty, right? Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, what if we want to set the position of the box? Setting the X, Y, width, and height every time you want to move the box would be kind of a problem, right? So every UI view has a property called center, 
and the center determines the location of the center of the box. Okay, so it's measured from the middle of the box, not the upper left corner, okay? And we can move our box in this way. So right now, I'm going to leave this at 20-20, and we saw where the, where the box was. Let's take one more look, right? We saw where it was a moment ago, right here. But let's say I wanted to move it to the middle of the screen, okay? So what I'll do is I'll say, and you could put this either before or after we add subview. I'll put it down here. I'll say box center and you'll see that center is a cg point so a cg point is another um, class like cg rect except instead of having four properties it has two properties it just has an x and a y okay um, center also is a is a is a point so it also has um, the x property and the y property so you can set these each individually or you can make one cg point and then um, set them both at the same time, okay? So I'll do this right now, right? And maybe I wanna move my box kind of towards the center of the screen. So maybe I'll put it at 160 and 276, I don't know, right? Okay? Um, and then we'll, we'll take a quick test and see what it looks like. Hmm, so it moves all the way out here. So this is the center right here. So this point right there is 160 and coming down here is 276, okay? So it's a little weird, you know, when you're using center, you're measuring from the middle. And when you're using CG rect, it's measuring from the upper left corner, okay? So that's a little strange. Let's talk about bounds for a minute, okay? So we talked about frame, Okay, so the frame of the box determines the X and Y of the upper left corner and the width and height. So it essentially it measures out an area of this in a you know anywhere on the screen into a rectangle and you know you can put a view there. Um, we used center, and so center lets us position an element on the X and Y axis without bothering about the what width or the height, right? But it always measures from the center of the object, right? So what does bounds do? Okay, so to understand bounds, what we'll do is we'll make another object, I'll call it small box, okay? And small box, what I want to do is I want to make another UI view with a frame, okay? And what I'll do is I'll give this box a frame, it'll be a CG rect of, let's make it, um, let's put it at X of 0, Y of 0, We'll give it a width of 20 and a height of 20. Okay? I'm going to close that there. And what we'll do is we'll give this a color. We'll say small box, you have a background color of UI color um, black. Oops, blue. Let's do black. Right? Okay. So what, it, what happens if I add this as a sub view? of our current view, right? The main view controller, right? So I'll say add small box, okay? And what's gonna happen is we'll see the black box in the upper corner, hopefully, right? If I've done everything right. Okay, there we go. There's our 20 by 20 pixel box, right? What if I did this? What if I said, um, uh, Instead of adding this to, to view here, what if I did, what if I put box here and I added small box as a sub view of box, right? This would have been the red box, right? What happens? Hmm. Okay, so now the box is in the upper corner here. So what's happening? Well. Um, when I add a box as a subview of another view, it uses that view's coordinate system to determine its location. So when it was added to the main view, 0, 0 was in this corner up here, okay? When I add it to the, to the red box as a subview, 0, 0 is in the upper left corner of, the, of this box, right? Now, so where does bounds come into play? Well, whenever you ask for the frame, of an object, right? 
then you're getting its location and size inside its super view, right? And when you ask for bounds, it's going to give you its size and location in its own coordinate system, okay? So let's use bounds for a moment here, right? Um, let's imagine that I want to move this box to, um, to the, the center here, right? So, you know, um, let's imagine like uh, I want to get the bounds of the larger box, right? So if, what if I do this? What if I say print and then I say, um, you know, box dot frame and then down here I'll say print box dot bounds. Okay, so we'll take a quick look at these, right? So the first box is at 110 by 176, right? That's the X and Y. And then the width is 100 and the height is 200. This actually looks more like the position of the center, right? Oh, yeah, because I moved it, right? So um, it's, a, it's not the original 2020, right? And then the, um, the bounds, though, says 0X and 0Y with the 100, height 200. So the width and the height are the same, but the X and Y are different, okay? So the X and Y here for the frame determine the, where the upper left corner is relative to the super view, right? But the X and Y in the bounds determine the position of the, of the you know, of the, of the frame within its own coordinate system. So essentially the X and Y are usually in the upper left corner, though that can actually change, okay? But, but in general, it's usually going to be the upper left corner, right? So how do we use that? Well, let's give it a try, right? So if I have something that I'm going to position that's a child of another object, what I want to do is I want to ask for the bounds of its parent, right, to determine the coordinate space that I'm working inside of. So in our case here, even though in, in a lot of ways, this could be done also with frame. It makes more sense to do some things with bounds. And in some cases, bounds will always be the right answer will f where frame will give you the wrong answer, right? So um, let's, let's give it a quick try here. So what if I say, uh, you know, small box uh, dot center. And you know what we'll do is we'll do it this way. I'll say center dot x equals box dot bounds dot width divided by 2. Right, and then I'll say small box dot center dot y equals box dot bounds height divided by two. Right, so that should put the the small box right in the middle using its center. Right, let's give it a try. Hey, there we go, right in the middle. So anyway, there's a quick a quick example using um, frame, uh, center, and uh, and bounds. Okay, thanks for watching.